Hello, Jess Too Good here, and you guys know the drill. I'm counting down the LEGO sets I want the most that released in summer 2021. May releases count as summer with LEGO, spanning all the way to August, though there are many August releases that haven't been revealed from themes I love, like some LEGO Marvel and a bunch of LEGO Super Mario. But from what has been revealed, there is more than enough. Without further ado, let's get into this. The $60 LEGO Video Punk Pirate Ship is the only video set I really wanted this new wave. Like, I love weird and colorful minifigures, but a lot of this new wave is recolors in some sets I really don't care about the builds of. And with so many crazy minifigures of this wave, I just think the amount of interesting minifigures of this year is getting me a bit burnt out. Still, the furry in me will probably get some of those other sets, but it might be best to wait until the inevitable sale as the slog of the app is really making this seem flop, it seems. I'm at least looking forward to Bandmate Series 2 in the fall. However, the punk pirate ship is interesting. I like pirate ships. This one is a bit too colorful for my build liking of a pirate ship, though. It's not awful. The shaping here is pretty decent. But the minifigures are a really good selection, and I kind of like the play features with the stage on the pirate ship. I like the mermaid's new hair piece, better than in the gold color from the limo set. The kraken has an awesome new and exclusive headpiece, and the recolor of the shark is admittedly pretty dope. <sighs> this new wave, my taste is all over the place for Ninjago. The only set to make my top 25 is a friggin' $40 Final Flight set. Like, don't get me wrong, I do want some of the other sets, but I just don't want them as much. Like, the Ultrasonic remake, I, I want, but it's just never been one of my favorite Ninjago vehicles. And I'll probably get the Fire Dragon for the awesome anniversary, Nia. And the Water Temple set, yeah, I'm going to get that, but I'm not super looking forward to it. I just really want to compare it to the Temple of Atlantis. Anyways, for this 4 plus set, it's 40 bucks, which is far from the best price, but come on, this thing is so chunky and cute. Like, it's just a simple Destiny's Bounty dumbed down as a remake, and I think it might be too soon to get that as a full-on remake, which I would love a remake of the final flight of the Destiny Bounty, but we got that one last year for the regular Destiny Bounty. The spooky design littered with spring green and dark blues rule, even if it's just a pathetic puny playset build. This is not a great set, but damn it, I want it. <laughs> I'm not into the Clone Wars, I don't plan on watching the Bad Batch, I'm kinda sick of Star Wars. However, the Bad Batch attack shuttle breaks the boringness of the grey Star Wars ships with a really nice sand blue. I also like the lime for a speeder bike. Both color schemes make these builds pop out to me. Not a bad deal for $100, but the stars, the minifigures. I love how each Bad Batch minifigure has some fantastic printing and even some new pieces. The detail in them really stands out. I really appreciate how different this is from other Star Wars sets with those choices. I'm looking forward to getting this one, and you can't go wrong with a gonk. I'm starting a project to rebuild and display all my brickheads because I literally own every single numbered brickheads. I should have taken more care of those San Diego Comic Con exclusive ones. So my interest in these have peaked since the early days, and perfect timing since we're getting our first branded DuckTale set with the line. Now, I've never gone into the show aside from the Earworm theme song, but I adore the NES game, so DuckTales holds a special place in my heart. I will support the crap out of this set, even if Huey, Dewey, and Louie are the same build three times. Scrooge looks perfect with the 80s design presented here. Revealed today, the 18 Plus Pride LEGO Everyone is Awesome set is a phenomenal minifigure pack for 35 bucks. I love LEGO minifigures, especially hair pieces for minifigs, and every hair piece here is an exclusive color aside from black and white hair. Official monochrome minifigures has been a want of mine for a while, and heck, the blue minifigure has a new hair piece altogether. The new $40 Iron Man Ironmonger Showdown may have a pretty oversized Ironmonger build, but the set is something I've wanted for a while, and it's great to see a set from the original Iron Man 2008 film. Aside from size issues, the glow-in-the-dark reactor piece and head print is interesting. For minifigures, we get a good update of, what is it, the Mark III armor with an excellent figure of Obadiah. The Pepper Potts minifigure doesn't work as well as some earlier versions of her. Like that face print is one that they use for Hermione, I'm not entirely sure. The first on my list for the new LEGO Harry Potter 20th Anniversary Hogwarts system is the $40 Fluffy Encounter. I adore this new system of Hogwarts sets for nostalgia purposes. They're simpler than the 2018 system, meant to be stacked on top of each other and each having the sand green roofs like the original line I grew up with from 2001 to 2002. Also, my 2018 and on Hogwarts display is in pieces, so I need a new Hogwarts to put up anyways. Perfect timing. 
Now that I think of it, this actually follows the old rule of a new Hogwarts style system every three years. That's pretty cool. Either way, this particular set is my least favorite of the bunch. Not for the build of the Forbidden Corridor, which I think is good for what it is. I think that interior with the roof there is the strongest. The rest seems vacant in detail, however. But what really let me down is the Fluffy build. I wanted a new Fluffy for years, and the one in this set has a new headpiece. The build makes it look like a robot Fluffy. It just doesn't work. The harp is great. I really hope the strings are printed. A great part usage with the flag piece. Golden Hermione is a great collectible. I love getting hair pieces in gold. But yeah, I, I still want it. This set isn't bad by any means. I'm just a little bit left down with how they captured the Fluffy. Something about the 20th anniversary Hogwarts first flying lesson set makes it stand out to me. I love random playset retail exclusives, and this is one of the first ones for Kohl's in the United States, if not the first one. It just seems like a random $30 corridor build for the new Hogwarts system, which appeals to me. There's a quaint interior including a trophy case and an exterior with some nice Hogwarts house flags. The updated Madame Hooch figure is long overdue with the sleepy head hair piece in that grave for the first time, and the anniversary quarrel provides the most generic pearl gold face print. Good for custom sig figs. The LEGO Harry Potter Hogsmeade Village set is a great deal for $80. I'm surprised this set even exists. It almost feels like something they do as a direct consumer set. It gives me vibes of the Diagon Alley set. I do wish this was on regular LEGO base plates like that one, but I digress. Both builds look fantastic with their warm colors and are easily implemented to the exteriors outside of the world of Harry Potter and say, a Winter Village. The interiors are a bit cramped but continue that warm, comfy feel. I especially like the design of the Honeyduke shop. I really associate the three broomsticks with my visit to Universal Studios in Florida. I just wish the interior was as big. Any other year, this might be higher on my list, but there's so many great Harry Potter sets to get, it's going to be hard to display things like these that are outside of Hogwarts. For the minifigures, I like the new face print for Dean Thomas and new hair colors for Madame Rose Mertz and Miss Flume. The Wakanda Dragonfire is a very strange and interesting aerial ship. At a price of only $20, I like the windshield here and love the alternate display method. As a kid, I used to love dragonflies, so the similar appearance appeals to me there. The only exclusive minifigure in here is Shuri, a perfect version of the character with the hairpiece and detailed new face and torso. Mickey's $10 plane ranks rather high because I freaking love sets that are based on animation properties and go all out with the colorful and cartoony style. I've been wanting a Mickey Mouse theme for years. All we've gotten is Duplo, direct consumer sets, and blind bags, well, aside from the 2000 sets. Even if it's 4 plus, the simple build here works. It doesn't need to be anything extravagant. The plane here is simple but effective. I want to have a cute cartoony Mickey Mouse display, damn it. I love how these sets also give us different variants of iconic characters like Mickey Mouse, a pilot one here. This is one of the most adorable cheap sets of the year. Mickey and Donald's Farm is a $30 set, continuing that cartoony, simplistic style this new Mickey and Friends theme is bringing. There's not many LEGO farm sets in the recent years, so the small builds are cute to build up a farm. The barn itself is a bit too simplistic for a LEGO City setting, but colorful and cartoony enough with the printed walls for a Mickey Mouse display. This is the only set with Donald. I like the exclusive torso print on both figures. The main star of the set is the exclusive sheep piece though, one that I haven't seen in system before. Why this piece is being introduced in this set specifically is a random choice I don't really get, but I'm not complaining. The new LEGO Friends apartment set is an unexpected release, a phenomenal deal at $150. As a sucker for residential buildings in LEGO, even if it's just a slice of some rooms and brief exteriors, I love the interpretation of everyday modern appliances, furniture, and knickknacks around the house. The minifigure selection has some of the best casual torso and legs in the recent years with some phenomenal new hair colors for existing pieces like the Doc Brown hair in black, Bellatrix hair in brown, and Sally from the Nightmare Before Christmas hair in blonde. I'm also looking forward to building this with my mom since I'm visiting her this month, May 2021. She loves friends and used to show me episodes when I was younger. The $70 18 plus LEGO Infinity Gauntlet is something I may not have wanted a couple years ago, but I've really warmed up to 18 plus non-minifigure scale sets, especially from Marvel with some interesting helmets and busts. The gauntlet here is gorgeous with the amount of latisse gold elements used, the stones are portrayed with some nice translucent pieces and plate builds that are different from one another, and the posability to even make the gauntlet snap is perfect. 
The new LEGO Harry Potter Hogwarts Chamber of Secrets set is a bit hefty at $130. Again, this is a new 20th anniversary Hogwarts system and an important part with the Great Hall and Chamber of Secrets builds. The 2018 Great Hall is more elaborate. This is simpler for the style, but a new Chamber of Secrets is long overdue. We haven't gotten one since 2002. The updated Basilisk is much needed compared to the awful one of the 2018 Great Hall. The minifigure selection here rocks with the first time of Professor Sinestra, Colin Creevy, and the Cornish Pixie standing out. Another new Lockhart is always great, and it's really surprising to see a glow-in-the-dark nearly headless Nick. I think that's the first time we're getting plain minifigure arms in that glow-in-the-dark color. I wish some details like the cereal box and face and the Chamber of Secrets were printed instead of stickered, but it's no biggie. The new Creator Ferris Wheel set is only 80 bucks. Smaller is better here though. I had the $100 one back in the day and it was so big that the power functions didn't work for me. I probably built it wrong, but the whole situation is explained further in my most disappointing sets list video. I usually wouldn't have too much space to display something like this, so the size is perfect. And it's different enough with its vibrant color scheme and fun sun design to stand apart from the Creator Expert one I missed. I also like the bumper car alternate build. This is all good for the Lego collector like me who is running out of space. I'm glad this LEGO City Wildlife Rescue Operation set is 90 bucks. Sure, it's only 525 pieces, but it doesn't feel overpriced with everything included. The set introduces a long overdue new elephant piece, which looks great. The original LEGO elephant was found in Orient Expedition, one of the most nostalgic LEGO themes to me. The exclusive elephant calf is adorable, the exclusive hatching croc egg even more. The scenery builds are pretty neat with the use of the road plate system in a clever way. The rescue station is good, but I wish there was more to it, and I surprisingly even like the helicopter with an interesting color scheme. The $100 Wildlife Rescue Camp must be a retail exclusive. It's a strange counterpart to the previous rescue operation, 10 bucks more but with 22 less pieces at 503. Each have their pros and cons, both with that new elephant. But this set also has the new line of the 4 Plus set, which barely missed the list. Here in such strange colors, I adore the choice. There's a lion cub from that set, an exclusive color for a lion cub, the lioness from that 2020 Safari Off-Roader, and a new and exclusive color for the eagle and monkey pieces. Also, one of the minifigures seemed to have a new ponytail hair piece. That's pretty awesome. I also like the terrain build more here with a treetop camp setup. Now, I do wish the playset builds in both of these sets were more substantial for the prices, but I'll work with what I got. Like I said, the $100 and $90 prices aren't bad for these. The rescue vehicle appeals to me in its boxiness and the color scheme as well, too. The new LEGO Avengers Endgame Final Battle is confirmed to be $70, so that gets me really hyped. I mean, there's one thing in this set I want more than anything else in this whole Marvel wave, the new Thanos Big Fig. The one we were stuck with since 2016 was introduced as a comic version, and no new piece has been made for the body. So we had this inaccurate helmet and armor for the original Endgame and Infinity War sets. This one has a new removable head with a set at the top. I love how LEGO-like that looks. Either way, for the rest of the figures, the new Scarlet Witch is interesting. I mean, she seems unusually happy for the context of the movie and is missing the cloth attachment. The new Iron Man with the shield rocks. Cap is new too, and I think Ant-Man is, but the new designs don't pop out for me either. The rest come in other sets, but with the builds, I especially love the Ant Van. I love how the back opens up and the bland design accurate to the film. The Avengers facility is just like a smaller version of the 2019 one. I guess the rubble parts are neat for the movie, and the Thanos jail is a pure meme. It's too small compared to the last, but I'll put them side to side. I still have that one on display, and again, it's only $70. I love the $20 Mickey and Minnie Space Rocket. It's that perfect cartoony fun that gives me vibes of the classic 2008 Rocket Ride SpongeBob set. Love the extremely limited space outfit variants. For some reason, when LEGO gives us really restricted specialized versions of licensed characters, I straight up dig it. I like the cute little space alien too, and the Munga ship is just another meme. The $40 Mickey and Friends Firehouse has the best minifigure selection of this new theme. It's lovely to have a cheap way to get goofy for those who missed out on the train set, even if it's not the same generic version. They went Ned Flanders in the Simpsons set here. But finally, a freaking Lego Pluto. I've waited so long for a Pluto figure and this looks perfect. Well, ignoring the 2000 version, of course. I also love how we get a new headpiece for Mickey and Minnie entirely with the fire hats molded onto it. Sure, it has my least favorite builds aside from the one set that didn't make the list, but the build is a cute facade of a firehouse either way. Just not as adorable on the levels of the other ones on the list. And with the only set I own from the 2000 Mickey Mouse theme being the fire truck, I'm getting 2017 freshman year of college nostalgia. That's when I built and reviewed that set on my channel. 
The $100 Crater Medieval Castle is just what so many of us wanted, a classic Lego castle. Yeah, the last one we got was in 2013, which was a bit on the simpler side. Don't get me wrong, I stand the Angry Birds one, all right? I just never built it because the Angry Birds stuff did kind of turn me away from building it. But anyways, this one uses its 1400 pieces with a fully enclosed design and breaks away from some of the other standard castle themes with a the multicolor look, having a bit of a village aesthetic, even having a water wheel to its exterior. I just wish there was more than three minifigures, with the set missing a king and queen. The ultimate build rocks here too, I love the toll tower, and the village castle wall side build is cute too. I'll try getting two of these to do the main build in the tower. The LEGO Adventures with Luigi starter course is what everyone wanted from the start, a LEGO Luigi figure. What's weird is to this date, we're still not sure what the two player function of LEGO Luigi is, but Luigi was one if not my favorite video game character growing up. In many ways, this is a dream come true, but I still need a minifigure of Luigi and Mario. Anyways, at 60 bucks, it's much like the last starter course, but I think I like the build here more with the platform system they have going on. All the other characters are new builds, an exclusive Boom Boom, which I like the ball joint posability of, but I don't like the gray joint showing, the pink Yoshi, which has a much more interesting function than the last Yoshi, and this Bone Goomba that has a new piece of the two feet stepping forward. I personally like the LEGO Mario course builder system, and this will be sure to inspire new custom courses on the channel. Just stay tuned. The LEGO Spider-Man Daily Beagle is the ultimate LEGO Marvel set. For so many years, I've wanted a LEGO Marvel Direct Consumer set, as in a complex build for adults initially exclusive to the LEGO shop, and we got two of them, but they were both micro-scale duds. It perplexed me why there wasn't, say, a D2C Xavier's School or Daily Bugle. Well, my dreams came true. This $300 behemoth is not only an incredible build, but an incredible minifigure set. The build is fully enclosed and modular, each floor can be removed like a modular building. I love the skyscraper look that we can't even get in a LEGO City build, each floor with colorful references and details, where the set has a bunch of new exclusive Daily Bugle 2x2 printed tiles. There's that meme Spider-Man pick, unfortunately stickered, a gorgeous build for logo and removable glass window panels, where one has the green goblin glider exploding out. The screens are great, I just wish they were also printed and not stickered. Also great new New York side builds like the taxi and newsstand, but the minifigures, oh man, our first Lego Daredevil, Punisher, Blade, and Black Cat, those stand out. Four of the 26, I mean 25, so many other amazing figures from the updated Jay Jonah, the staff of the Daily Bugle we've never gotten before, minor characters, and even Firestar who I'm unfamiliar with. The set is more than enough for the hefty $300 price tag, and I'm very happy LEGO Marvel is getting a more complex build than the juniorized stuff we get each year. My number one pick is a bit surprising and unconventional. You ready? Well, the $20 LEGO Harry Potter Polyjuice Potion Mistake is my most wanted set of summer 2021. This is a set I always wanted them to make but never thought LEGO would. Well, there was the earlier scene from my childhood, adding to the nostalgia with this one, but this set is a billion times better. I don't know, I like when LEGO does bathrooms. They always skimp out on them as very small parts of bigger sets, but this is a full bathroom for that lovely new Hogwarts system for the 20th anniversary. So much so, there's a feature to lead to the hidden passage of the Chamber of Secrets, connecting straight to that set. But the minifigures, I friggin' adore. The updated transformation mishaps of Harry as Crab and Ron as Goyle, but even better, the Cat Hermione TF. This scene was my favorite as a kid. The build itself is enough to display on its own as a vignette, but I always wanted a Cat Hermione figure. How that piece works is great, going over any regular minifigure head. Throw in a friggin' fourth minifigure with the most important of the Golden Anniversary figures, Golden Harry, again, love that hair piece in the pearl gold. All that of a $20 set makes this an instant buy for me. No hassle with an expensive price. And honestly, my life is so busy now, so many times do I buy huge sets and don't finish them ASAP because building LEGO requires time to really enjoy it for me. This is a simple build for a set I always wanted that will take like 5 seconds to build. Sure, the build is beautiful for the bugle, but part of me feels I'll buy it and want to build a lot of the smaller sets over it for how much time it'll take. And that gives this set the edge over it small, it's quick, and everything about it is perfect, and it's just another set I dreamed would never be possible. That's why it's number one, and that's it. So I like filming these little segments when I'm done editing the video, which it's 4 a.m. Worked on this for today straight, but I have to thank you guys, because if it wasn't for you guys watching and commenting and subscribing, 
none of this content would be able to be made. So it's great hearing your feedback and a big thanks to the channel members, which you guys could join for as low as $1 a month. And you could see lists a little bit early, some other content as well. But that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments which ones you would choose as your most wanted in summer 2021 sets and subscribe for more Lego lists. I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Bye.